What up? I'm K1. And I'm Stewie, and welcome back to the K1 and Stewie Show. Uh, we're so happy to be back one last time before we, you know, we go home for the school year. We got finals this week, but you know, we thought it was important to take some time and get in the, get in the studio one last time. Yes, and today we're doing things a little different because it's not only the final show of the semester, it's also the final show for the seniors who work behind the scenes to make all of this come together, um, and seniors, including myself. Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, no, me and Stu definitely appreciate y'all, everything y'all do for us, make our job a lot easier. Uh, yeah, uh, so we definitely want to get y'all some air time and you know, have y'all on the show. Appreciate y'all for coming. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. It's going to be fun. And with that, we'd like to welcome Grace Katie, our writer and social media admin, Kristen Parisi, the video editor and who created our YouTube channel, Patrick Kern, our video tech who helps set up the equipment and operates the camera alongside with Kristen, and Hope, who we all know and love. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. This is fun. I'm Kristen Parisi. I am from Ellicott City, Maryland, which is 20 minutes outside of Baltimore, and I am a journalism major. I'm Patrick Curran. I am from Chicago. I'm a digital media major and a public relations minor, and I'm happy to be here, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm a digital media minor as well. Oh, good. Okay. You can't forget that one. <laughs> I'm about to get that one. <laughs> and I'm Grace Katie. I'm from Delafield, Wisconsin, and I'm majoring in journalism and political science. Nice, nice, nice. And, you know, we have some special guests here with us today, but we're still going to start off the episode like we always do with some EGQs. And the first one is, what's something that all of you feel like you couldn't live without? Um, she turns on the mic to not answer. <laughs> Ooh. Um, I would say Italian food. I love oh. my grandma's Italian food. Yeah. I would say TV. Okay. Oh. Um, because I like grew up watching so much TV, and it's what I want to do in the future. So, um, I would say specifically, like I fall asleep to TV every night. Mm -hmm. So if I didn't have that, I wouldn't be able to fall asleep. For sure, yeah. I can agree with that. <laughs> yeah. I'm scared of the dark. <laughs> but I definitely, I need do, you have, do you have a nightlight? Um, no, I the use TV, the TV. The TV. <laughs> night light. The TV yeah. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Or a computer. Mm -hmm. Or the laptop. Laptop would be all right. Why do you choose to go to sleep? Because my mom does the same thing. <laughs> um, for a few years, for about four or five years, it was Outer Banks, like every night. But um, I've been switching it up. Not switching it up. Right now it's been like the same YouTube video every night for a few months. The same video? The same. Yeah, it's three hours long. <laughs> oh, okay. So, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's a... Is it like ASMR? Nah, no. nah it's like a... Um, like a meditation? Like a talk show. Oh, oh cool. sure. Yeah, cool. so yeah, yeah, pretty similar to what we're doing now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, the next question is, you know, the show me and K1 and Stewie, obviously those are our nicknames or whatnot. Um, we're wondering if y'all had any nicknames that y'all go by or, you know, are known by and you know, with your family and friends. Um, sorry, I thought it was off still. I have a nickname that my little sister made for me when we were probably like five and eight um, from the movie Ella Enchanted. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that, but there's like three sisters and there's one sister that they introduce as the special Olive because she's very like high energy and kind of just like dorky. So my family calls me Olive. So that's my nickname. That's cute. Mm -hmm. um, mine is not as cute. <laughs> my family, my family uh, calls me Hopi Shinopi Noopy Nop, <laughs> and the someone told me, thing, yeah, thing. someone told me recently they're like a nickname is supposed to be a shorter just gonna say. version, <laughs> um, but my name is Hope, so I don't really have <laughs> much. And then um, other than Hopi Shinopi Noopy Nop, they call me, um, <laughs> they call me Hope Alicious or used to. I don't really have that like nickname. Fergalicious. Sure, yeah. Wait, how did the Hopi, Snoopy, Snoopy, Snop nickname come So that wasn't it, but um, <laughs> <laughs> um, it kind of came about because I think my mom just likes words. I don't really have a better explanation. Shout out to Simone. Shout out to Shout Simone. Out Simone. Out to yeah, Simone. Yeah, I think Shout she just Simone. thought it was like a fun something. Um, it didn't want me to be left out because my sister's name's Ashley, so they why, call her Why like, not just Hopi? That's why I call you. Yeah, I do have that one too, mm -hmm. but I prefer... You know, just I'm just hope. So, what about what about you, um, Kristen or Patrick? Um, well, I go here. I go by KP. It's my initials. But back at home, I uh, my friends used to call me Tinny because Tin, Kristen. But then I also my dad used to call me Shortstop because I used to play shortstop <laughs> for softball. 
and I'm also apparently since I'm small too. That's a great nickname that I always that carried me. That was my always like all my social media handles used to be shortstop junior because that's what they used to call me. Where did junior come from? Just small little kid. Oh, he's okay. <laughs> like extra small, extra shortstop, small, and then the junior. Second, I guess because I'm the second child. I don't know. Okay. Patrick? Uh, yeah, people call me PC. I would say in grade school and high school, that's like what I went by Still. for my initials. And then it's funny here, like I kind of dropped it. Um, and then I'll run into people from high school at Marquette and they'll be like, PC! <laughs> and I'm like, what up, PC? Yeah. Um, but that's it has kind a of ring it. To it. It yeah. does have a ring I like to it. it. Yeah. It's like Professor Chuck. Sure. Oh. <laughs> Shout out. Shout out him. Yeah. Shout out Shout I had a different uh, nickname back in the day. My friends growing up, they used to call me Stevie DV. That was that was my that was my nickname growing up. All sure. my best friends that I still talk to, like still my best friends really, along with my teammates here. So they don't call me that anymore. But when <laughs> we were younger, they called me all that that all the way up to graduation. Did you Ooh. walk across the stage? Did they? Is that, is that what they said? Nah, nah. They said, nah, nah, they said <laughs> Stephen <laughs> Stephen Mitchell. Well, I don't know. Full government. That would be a crazy thing. What, what about like, announcing full somebody government. nickname for graduation? Full what about yeah, you, Cam? That'd be a pretty cool graduation. Um, Any other? <clears throat> well, I mean, Cam itself is a nickname. Uh, you know, my full name is Cameron, uh, obviously. So I mean, it's pretty much just been Cam my whole life, uh, like, or other like some like easy nicknames, Cammy. Um, mm. That's about it. Okay. <laughs> well, for our final EGQ today, you know, obviously this is a sports-centered podcast, so we wanted to ask you guys about your sports experience, and if you grew up playing sports or watching sports, so, Grace? Yeah, I mean, watching sports, I always grew up a basketball fan, big Bucks fan, big Celtics fan, since Drew Holiday went to the Celtics, so new Celtics okay. fan, <laughs> okay. um, and I grew up playing tennis, I played tennis for, like, most of my life, um, that was, like, a really big part of my life from when I was, like, 6 to 20, um, and then I got a really bad overuse injury, so I don't play as much anymore, but my little sister plays tennis in college, um, so I'm still very much around it, so... Um, we talked about this yesterday, Hope. We had our own little podcast assignment we for did. We our did. podcasting class. I played, I think, every sport known to man. My mom just threw me into everything. I played softball, lacrosse, field hockey, basketball. I swam. I did. I swam up until I was 18, and then I also did field hockey, basketball, and lacrosse in high school. So I had a sport every single season. Man. It kept me in check, but... I my dad's from New York, so we're Jets, Knicks, Rangers, and Yankees fans. So, cool. Half of it's been a really sad time with the Knicks and Jets, but the Rangers and the Yankees keep us in check. So, okay, hey, cool. Wait, you used to also be on the Marquette swim team, right? Yeah. Or am I misremember? Okay. No, I was on the club swim team, but I went to one meet and oh, okay. like three practices. Okay, so never mind. Unofficial <laughs> member. No, I I was a paying member. I have official the member with. Oh, yeah, she, her, her backpack to this day is yeah. still, it's her it's still backpack. Backpack. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I grew up playing basketball and baseball and grew up a Bulls and White Sox fan. So any Cubs fans in here? I don't think there's... No. No. I don't even watch baseball. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, grew up going to White Sox and Bulls games. And I typically will try and go to a White Sox game every summer because um, they're just so much fun. I love going to baseball games. We went to a Brewers game a couple weeks ago. That was so yeah, much fun. Was that was fun. Ain't they yeah. weak now, though? The White Sox? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. They are so bad. Yeah. They are I know so that bad. much. Yeah. I don't watch that much either. <laughs> they are very bad, but it's still fun to cheer on. For sure. Yeah. All right, so now moving into our last segment, or not last segment, our main segment. So me and Cam, you know, obviously we're around each other every day, so we talk about our experiences experience a lot of our experiences together uh, and you know how about both enjoyed our time at Marquette so far so I was wondering how has your time at Marquette been you have any favorite memories experiences or anything you want to touch on about your time here um I mean I can start I transferred to Marquette uh, I went to the University of Missouri for my first year and um, it was in 2020 so it was really hard to like meet anybody and you know just kind of experience regular college so when I transferred to Marquette was really excited I had a pretty tough first year here too so I was like okay I think I'm the problem I just don't think I'm gonna enjoy college um, and then I actually joined student media I joined the wire and um, that was where I met Hope Hope was my first friend at Marquette 
you're both on the opinions desk. Um, and yeah, I just, I mean, my experience at Marquette has very much been centered around student media, just like working for the journal, working for the Tribune, doing this, being a guest on TV shows. That's kind of been uh, like the defining factor in my Marquette experience. And my best memories have been made like in the newsroom or just like with you guys. I would say something similar. My sister also went here. She graduated in 2022. So she would always just pick me up and we'd go to Cops and Culver's like all the time. So I just think like spending time with her outside, not at home. But I think just like hanging out with my friends. I, I loved going to Soul Women's. I, I feel like I went to Soul Women's like every Friday with my friends and my roommate. So I think just like making memories that and then just like all, all the little activities that we've got to do. Like we've done a lot of senior activities this year already. Like bar crawls and house crawls and just like some senior like tailgates and stuff so those have been really fun but like working at the wire too like most of my memories I've become because of like you guys and like all the athletes so it's like a lot of fun like going to the games sitting on the baseline recording getting to go to like different tournaments and like dope do by play by play and stuff so it's like living out the dream of like being able to be a sports broadcaster and a sports journalist so I think that's cool and like some of my favorite memories I think I was on the I was on the baseline when Tyler hit the N one against Illinois, oh, and yeah. all of you guys like yeah, ran over. I, he almost fell on top of me. That was um, that was a fun game, and then just also I was play by play when the women beat UConn, so that was a fun game to call as well. So it's like just being able to like surround myself with cool moments, my job, and also with my really good friends. Yeah, I would say something similar. Um, coming to Marquette, I knew I wanted to be a part of student media and do like television for a living, but I didn't really know what that entailed. So freshman year with COVID, I kind of just like kept to myself with my friends. Um, but I always saw people on Instagram and in this building working on stuff. I was like, that's really cool. Uh, so then sophomore year, I kind of bit the bullet and uh, joined. And it's been like the greatest experience of my college life so far, just getting to... Um, learn so much from you know my peers and from our mentors like it's just a really amazing experience and i wouldn't have treated it for the world um but from apart from the market wire a lot of my favorite experiences here have just been like going out with my friends having a good time because those are the memories that i think we're going to look back on like 15 20 years from now is like those nights at murph's or going to being in the kidoba line at 2 a.m like um so i think that that's just like what i've really enjoyed here is immersing myself in Milwaukee and all the opportunities that we have. And the taco yeah. truck, too. Yeah. And the taco truck. Rest, rest in peace your stomach if you're at uh, Qdoba at 2 a.m. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, no. I, mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have done that many a time over uh, the years. It's better wow. than Papa John's. I, well, I think that, nah. that student life improved here a lot when they brought the taco trucks here. That was a really, that, that was that a turning point. This year. Have it you guys had the taco year. trucks? Uh, uh, nah, but one of our teammates, or I haven't, but uh, one of our teammates goes there a lot jonah uh he loves the taco does he, like does he go to the white or the blue one uh i could not tell you i would assume he lives in humphrey so whichever one is probably they're both close. like right they're like next they're he probably right went to both. Miss, yeah they're like competing uh, yeah for pa attention patrick and i, I like we did a side by well we didn't do a side by side but we tried both of them the white one's better the white one for better. sure yeah no i would um the blue one also sells like hamburgers and i was like <laughs> why would you sell hamburgers and tacos they're just no trying one. to diversify themselves <laughs> but um yeah i would concur with all of what you guys said, but um, especially Patrick, I think graduating high school, it always feels like the worst time of your life and it was so difficult. Um, so going to college, I kind of expected it to get to the end and for it to feel like the same thing. But um, what I know about high school that I think will be the same for college are the little moments that I think I'll miss. And I think those were the best experiences like being in the Qdoba line or taking walks or all the impromptu things that we did over the years, both um, the three of us and then some of our other friends and my other friends outside of the market wire so yeah I think that's what I'll also miss just the small moments that you don't get back but yeah I think I think I took advantage of uh, savoring those moments too so um, it's not the only memories we'll make too so it'll be good hmm. Hmm? yeah it kind of it's kind of I don't know. I can't explain the feeling hearing y'all talk about y'all being seniors because you know it's not. I mean, it's not like me and Stu. You know, too far yeah. uh, from that. Um, but yeah, man, we appreciate everything that y'all do for us. And if y'all could explain, you know, how y'all journey with this podcast started and uh, how everything went down. Yeah. Well, um, Hope is my roommate, so I remember her just kind of like talking about um, how she was going to be on it and going to be doing it. And she was like, yeah, there's going to be um, a podcast starting in fall with two of the basketball players. 
Um, I was like, oh, cool. And I kind of didn't think much more of it. Um, and then the day of the meeting or like one of the first meetings you guys had, um, Hope was like, you should stop by. And I did. Um, I had been kind of interested in doing sports journalism, um, but hadn't really got an opportunity here at Marquette too. And um, I listened in when you guys had your like mock episode with Maddie and met you both just like very briefly. And you guys were really sweet and kind and it seemed like a cool environment. And I was like, yeah, I just, it did just kind of happen pretty naturally, but um, I'm very glad to be a part of it. And it's definitely been like a, like a bright spot in yeah. this year. So you're missing a big part. Um, <laughs> when I literally was like, do you want a job? <laughs> <laughs> because oh. we need someone to do social oh, media. That is true. That I is just true. like kind of forced it on you, but you're really good at it. So. Oh, thank you. No, thank that you. is true. I did kind of forget about the the like kitchen counter conversation. I feel like yeah. Grace, would you like you did? You're like we should task you. Would you like a task? And I was like, sure. Yeah. So, but yeah, very happy with with how it happened. I guess for me, like we, I remember Patrick Johnson was like, yeah, this is gonna be something to keep your eye on. But like first semester, like I I had a lot going on. Like I have I have like two other jobs, so lot but I remember at the end of the semester I was like on the I was on the way to cover an event from Spectrum and I get a call from Hope got it nowhere and I was like hey Hope and she's like hey so I don't know if you really like still want to do it but if you want we want to do like video for the podcast if you want to do it like we have times on Tuesday nights and Wednesday mornings and like I was like well, I have we have our like our live tv show for the sports show but I was like yeah I can make it work it'll be fun like to the basketball players like it'll be fun I like I liked listening to the first two episodes that you guys did and I think being able to do like video podcasts is fun because like I think you just listen to it on Spotify and you can like you can listen to it but like I like watching all your guys' reactions with each other so it's been a lot of fun being able to like videotape it I mean it, it was a pain in the butt to try to get the lighting working <laughs> like the lighting in this room bad oh my but gosh what <laughs> like I'm so happy to be here. Oh, it was a pain in the butt no, to get the like, lighting. To like, get the lighting, but okay. it's just like I think you all like we create like it's like a fun environment. It's always fun like watching you guys like come in, talk with each other, getting to know each other. So I'm glad I was able to help bring the video part to life. Definitely. Yeah. To be honest, my involvement was pretty random. Um, <laughs> I just kind of like started showing up. I mean, a lot of my friends are here, and so it's just like. Patrick Johnson would be like, are you coming to podcast? I'm like, sure. sure. Um, and with Kristen, with Kristen having the TV show um, at the same time on recording days, I was pretty much here to just hit record. Um, <laughs> and, you know, it's been good to, like, hang out with you guys. It's been a blast, and I've enjoyed it fully. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, we appreciate our, all of your guys' presence here in your different capacities. <laughs> um, for me, I think that it was something that luckily just fell in my lap. I remember... Patrick Johnson, who is our director of student media, um, came to me and said, I spoke to Marquette Athletics NIL director and they want to, um, and they spoke to Stevie and Cam, um, or Maddie spoke to Stevie and Cam about creating a podcast and like, would you want to do it? And I was like originally like super nervous about it because um, I am more involved in like print journalism. So this is very different for me to hear my voice as I speak and you know interview people live in this way but um I was super curious I was super excited about it so I just kind of took the opportunity as it was and I think that's kind of the best thing about life is that sometimes those good things um just fall into your lap and you don't plan for it or expect it but um you get something really good out of it so that's kind of how I feel about this and yeah and I'm excited and I'm glad that I did it I'm glad that I met you guys yeah. glad that you guys can be involved in Trevor and Jack who are um, not seniors but behind the scenes as well so <laughs> it's cool to see how much people love it like we'll be mm -hmm. out and people recognize hope just from like the Instagram like seeing pictures of her with you guys and be like oh my gosh like how do you like being on the podcast how is it like we love listening like literally for the senior bar crawl I think there was like a good handful of people that were <laughs> really? like oh my yeah God. Like, like in line in line in yeah, line um, they're like how like in like the best celebrity. way possible no, shout yeah. out to the I like kind of <laughs> I don't want to make them sound like they no were yeah, yeah but like yeah, I it's think just sweet are, that people are like engaged with it and really like it. Yeah, it's there's so cool. much support. There's, like, so many comments. Like I remember the one of the first episodes we put on YouTube. There were like paragraphs for each of you. I think it was like the shock episode. Yeah. It was, like, Hope we love. Like glad you're able to do this. And it's like obviously like they're fans of you two on the basketball court. But like people love the podcast so much. And I, even on Twitter, like I see people like cutting up clips and putting it on Twitter, like showing. Oh, how wow. they, like, Can we hire them? Yeah, but paint <laughs> touches and all of them. Like they put out. 
They put, I mean, there's like all like the Mar- Marquette Twitter loves the podcast, and it's like really cool to like, sure. see it. We appreciate them. We need them. We need that support. Yeah. So, um, we've all been Marquette fans for years now, and we would all go to games together, which is such a special memory for me. Um, so I'm gonna ask you guys what your favorite memory is. First, I'll kind of talk about mine when it comes to you, um, Marquette basketball. I think I said this in a previous episode, but um, National Marquette Day is just such a fun mm. day. Nothing really compares to it. Um, but even I would say to you, like just the every week games that we would go to and we would get food before and like really make an event out of it, I think was a special memory as a Marquette fan of basketball. But what about you guys? Do you have a memory that sticks out from a game? Um, either like the game itself or before the game or something? Um, I have two. So one was Kristen was talking about the Illinois game. That was like the first Marquette basketball game I went to because we weren't really allowed to go freshman year. So sophomore year, that was like one of the first home games. And I remember like the buzzer beater with Tyler. That was just like being in the student section, the energy. I remember like I kind of snuck down like with all my friends. Like we all got closer um, as the game went on. And then we were like right at the front towards uh, the court at the buzzer beater and so that was just like so much fun to be a part of and then secondly uh last year i got to study abroad um in london and so in you know london i would go out with my abroad friends and we would all watch the marquette games at like this american sports bar and we would meet other marquette fans and other college basketball fans and it's just like crazy because like we're in europe and people are watching mm-hmm. marquette basketball so that was uh that was really cool i think for me as a fan, I didn't really get to go to that many games as a fan because I feel like I was always covering them. But I think there was one year, it was like one of the very first games of the season. My sophomore year it was my sister's birthday. It was her 22nd birthday on one of the games. And we, my, me, my mom, and my dad, my dad, me, my mom, and my dad, we all got pitched in and got her like, you know, like at the thing, it's like happy birthday for Marquette. Oh, yeah. Marquette yeah. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. basketball, like the band, like we got her that because that's like all she ever talked about. And it was like so cool to see her face, like being able to go to that game, but I think just like, I had so much fun at the Big East tournament with my dad. We went this year, and it's just like, we got to stay in New York, we got to see family, we went to the Marquette bars, it's just like, the memories that you make at like different parts, and like Madison Square Garden, like we always go to Rangers games, and it's like so cool to see like the college basketball atmosphere, and like them being able to cover the tournament last year, it's just like always fun to like see the behind the scenes, and like getting to like do all that. The Drumbotron activities then got me into trouble a few times. <laughs> Pay attention to that. See whose birthday it is. <laughs> Ref blows a whistle. Coach drew up a play. I don't know what play he just drew up. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it would be hard not to be distracted. I love the Drumbotron activities. Like, your guys is like, when they do, like, the little guests, like, here, like, meet your teammates and all that. Yeah, yeah, that I, don't was, know how yeah you I was going to say that. I was going to, I definitely, I'd be looking at the Drumbotron. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Shout out, Coach. I'd be, I'd be logged in, Coach. Shout out Stu, he be Don't getting me up. right. He be well, getting me right out so, the huddles. So we'll come out the huddles, and Cam most of the time will be like, oh, what, what play are we running? And I, <laughs> like 50% of the time, I'll like have paid attention and know. Other times, I'm like, ask Tyler. <laughs> He's, <laughs> He's like, oh, he like, uh, ask O. I'm like, all right, man, man, man. That's so funny because I feel like when we watch you guys, I'm always like, oh, they seem so locked in, like during the huddle. I mean, so we we are locked no, in. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just when you hear your voice. And it's just, <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? You hear yourself talk and you look up like, yeah. damn, man, now, now it's time to bring it in. Talking about Jumbotron, it's just making me think, what do you guys think about the Eagle video that plays before the game starts? Because we're all big fans of it. Mm. I remember I one day we like ran because we're like, we can't we miss, couldn't <laughs> miss the Eagle. Which is kind of uh, lame to admit, <laughs> but what do you guys think? Uh... I really, I, I only see the eagle like flying over the aisle because by the time it come on, we'll like finish doing our little pregame thing and then it'll be time to go in the huddle. So I just hear him like crow. Okay. That's all. And I just look up and see him over the aisle. I mean, I don't really know the meaning behind it or Yeah, nothing. that's what I was going to say. Like, it confused me at first. Like, I thought I missed something because one time it happened and like everybody started cheering. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> and then it kept happening and people kept cheering. And I'm like, I don't know if there's like a significance to Marquette, like this like actually happened. I don't know what's going on. It's like real footage of. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if they get like an eagle to fly like in Pfizer Forum. Yeah, That's I insane. think, 
I think it's like the Eagles run the city. That's kind of what I get from it, right? Yeah, like it's they're like right into Thunderstruck. Just the CGI is just really. It's just and then it like shakes it like vibrates. Yeah, yeah it's, people, it's an amazing video. Can so. you, you can, can you train an eagle? But yeah. I'm sure. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, dang near extinct. Oh. For real? <laughs> Not extinct, but they're in danger. Yeah, they're like bald danger. eagles? Yeah. Bald eagles. yeah. Bald eagles. How they going extinct? They the national bird. Because Marquette's it? taking them for the video. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> every no, no, every no, video, no, they got no. a new no. big no, bird. No, 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 no. We don't oh, got no eagles. Sorry, uh, I should not put that no out eagles. there. I do not want to get sued. We do not have any eagles. Yeah. Wait, I have a question for the Jumbotron things. How they you guys like... Oh, sorry. How do you guys like film it? Like like the little things like get to know me and like all like the funny like what is that film before the year we go to like it's like a media we have like a media day and then a media day we have like two different media days and one we're just like running around recording all that stuff like the the green with green screen there's like a bunch of different setups mm -hmm. then the one we're like with each other like playing games we're with yeah it's like in the owl it's actually in here we did the one of the green screens not in this specific room but Somewhere in Johnson Studio, Hall. Studio 6, right over there. Yeah, yeah, we were right over yeah. there. <clears throat> yeah, it'd be a media day. Uh, yeah, like Stu said, it'd be about it's a few different stations they uh they put you through. It take about four hours. Yeah. That's yeah, day. yeah. But the the <clears throat> the question with the teammate definitely the best. I think that's my favorite part um, as well. All right. Um, sorry, this is going back to the favorite Marquette memory. Um, I would say mine probably was that this last year my birthday fell on national marquette day so it was just like doubly fun it was just like That's it was a really day. it was a good time because i had like friends from like my hometown in high school that came and visited and got to kind of like experience like marquette basketball and just like what the what the campus environment is like and my parents came to the game and my parents became like really big marquette basketball fans after this year when they were like a little bit more involved and active and going but yeah i'd say like that day this year was just really fun because there was a lot a lot of celebrating so so um i don't mean nothing that was a great answer and i really liked your answer i was just sitting here thinking how is it possible that ball eagles going to extinct oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> you know because Cam, no i'm saying like, no uh, you gotta hear me <laughs> you gotta hear me out how is the ain't they like our national bird or something there you can't trouble. breed them or nothing. You know, like, oh, I ain't going to extinct. I think animals. I think what we do is huh? they're in trouble. What you mean you can't? They the U.S. <laughs> national bird. I There's can't get over that was a lovely answer. <laughs> <laughs> However, it's such a polite. It was kind of like he's like, <laughs> yeah, that was such a like, polite. Like, anyways, it's kind of disturbing. It's kind of disturbing me. I think like the, how a lot of things are go, go extinct. Like people like hunt them. Yeah, but I think what people we hunt. do. That's illegal. It is illegal, but people do it. There's like big game hunting. They but they hunting bald eagles. Well, I'm I not. I don't know if bald eagles are getting hunted. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> I was just saying people can, hunt illegal. I think it say, can also be like climate change. <laughs> I think that we make that a listener question. So you Ooh. know, if you're listening oh, out there, okay, you give us the answer to that because it seems like Cam we'll really post it on wants social. I think. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I ain't gonna say what. We'll I give Grace another job. I mean, this is something I just heard. I could be completely wrong. They could be living. Yeah, good. imagine we have gone through this entire time, and it's just because Stevie said something that I mean, wasn't true. Uh, uh, <laughs> like, you know, if it if it came from Stu, I mean, I, Stu Stu would trust this source. I trust okay. Stu with my sure. life, so okay. if Stu said it, it got to be true. Well, don't quote right. me, but uh, well, unless he said don't <laughs> quote it. <laughs> oh, they once teetered on the brink of extinction, but now the bald eagle population has climbed to an estimated three hundred and sixteen thousand. Oh, so we're good. Oh, so For sure, we're good. They're For sure, they back. back on. Maybe I didn't that back. was the government. I'm trying to tell you, they <laughs> how's the national bird gonna go extinct? <laughs> Like don't you can't tell me they ain't got no no eagles like in no cage somewhere. Oh. They got some oh. eagles. They got some eagles chained up. They do. They got some eagles. All oh. for the CGI Marquette video. Okay. Oh. All right. It's for some, but I don't know what it's for. Okay. I I hope they don't unleashing, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, so I mean, you guys were all either listened to or involved in the episode we did with Trey, Alan, Zaid, and you know they were talking about kind of the advice they give to their younger selves. Uh, you know, before they came to college, what's some advice, you know, if you could give to your younger self, you'd give to your younger self either as a kid or, you know, right before coming to college or as a freshman in college? Um, I feel like number one, I would say just like give it time. I think college is a big adjustment and we all expect to come and like love it right away. And it seems like it's going to be the best time of your life. And sometimes it takes a little while to get there. Um, and then I would also just like 
tell myself even just like a couple years ago to have more confidence go after more opportunities I feel like that's something being part of student media taught me a lot but there's a lot of things that I've been involved with in college that I remember hearing about like as a freshman and thinking like oh I could never do that I would never be capable of that and you know I wouldn't have done them if I wouldn't have tried so yeah just like you know have the courage to try things that that you want to do even if they seem intimidating yeah I would say it's just like I would say, like, yeah, trust the process. Give it a little bit of time. I mean, like, we came during a pandemic, so I would say, like, don't be afraid. Or just, like, just go out and, like, make new friends. Like, I remember I was, like, scared to knock on people's doors in the dorms, but I feel like I would just, like, do that randomly now. And, like, just don't be afraid to go out, try new things, but um, just be ambitious. And I think, like, I did that with, like, student media, but I was, like, a little scared to go out of my comfort zone because I came from Maryland and I only knew my sister. I feel like a lot of people here, like, they come and they know people from, like, their schools because, like, they're from the Chicago or they're from Milwaukee. So I just, like, don't be afraid to go out of your comfort zone and find something good in it. Speaking of knocking on people's doors, oh. <laughs> Hope, I don't know if you remember this. <gasps> oh, my. I know exactly what you're going to say. <laughs> I know exactly what you're going to say. People's doors. She was an RA? Yeah, she was an RA. I know exactly. RA. She was an uh, RA. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah. Hope. Plot hope. twist. So she was an RA. This is like, obviously we interacted, you know, just because she's at the front desk, walk by, hello, whatever. But this is the first time we actually like, you know, like, like really like face to face, like met. But uh, so it was like, it was one night. It was like two in the morning. I was like, I was asleep. Mm-hmm. I, I just. Oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> That's how you was feeling hope. I'm like, hold on. Oh. That's how you was feeling, Hope. I thought I, I thought it was just. She's some, angry. She's angry. I thought it was just some like you know some kids you know just For got sure. to college. They know it. Yeah. For sure. I, For sure. Oh my God, the free sound effects are crazy. I said, hold on, hold on. So I had a roommate at the time, so I was just gave it one more chance to let him you know answer right. the door. I'm sleepy. But heard it again, it's bang, funny. bang, bang. Mm-hmm. So then I finally get up, go to the door. And I answer them, my eyes are just closed, I'm like, <laughs> hello? Like, what, what's going on? What do you want? <laughs> and it's like, and Hope goes, uh, you have a guest in your room, and it's 2 a.m., and you're not supposed to have guests. Oh. You know, it's, it's past curfew. That's oh. not. And She's I'm, cracking down. And I'm like, I'm like, I don't have a guest in my room. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, so I'm like, well, then they, she, they had asked to, like, come in and see the room. I'm like, nah, like, no, we're not doing that. But I don't have a guest in my room. We eventually got it sorted out. I think my uh, my roommate had had a, a guest over, oh. and we, we figured it out. But yeah, I just had to had to talk about that. Oh, hope. That moment. All right, hope the RA. You are so crazy. I am down. in. What's your perspective? I'm in business. I'm in the hot seat, so I'm being <laughs> misconstrued. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> um, no, I knew exactly what he was gonna say because that was a situation that haunted me. <laughs> I had never had to do um, the police knock. So the little background about that. Um, that was like my first year RA and one of my like first like real situations. And we have like security guards who were like, oh, oh like you gotta do, like you gotta knock really loud. Um, security guards and then also like a former uh, RA person that I worked with as well was like, just do the police knock. Oh my God. So I did do the FBI knock. I do remember that. Um, <laughs> my knuckles hurt from that. Is and that I do, the only yeah. time you've ever done it? I've done it more times. Oh, oh, okay, but in those situations, it was got so scared deserved. when RA would knock on the door. It was justified. Uh, but I will say, I do remember knocking really hard, like so hard that like, I don't know how to explain it for Humphrey doors, but like if you push it, even when it's locked, it'll kind of like, like no, rever- no. like come oh, back a little bit. Yeah. Safe. So it was like, like I was banging so hard, it was like, yeah. So um, you know, I just want to go on air apologizing. Pub- a, pu- a public <laughs> apology. <laughs> now, yes, now that I am away from uh, sure. ORL, I can say the check um, was that maybe completely worth it. Um, Ooh. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> what happened? No, I'm joking. Uh, but yeah, I do remember that. And I remember <sighs> being like, oh, I hope he doesn't remember Oof. that. You framed uh, him too. He, he did, was framed. He was framed. Not by me. By there you. are other sources I can't name. They said it was still no. Nah, you gotta say who it was. They no, nah, just playing. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Stu ain't gonna never be in no trouble. What about what about you, Patrick? Though, as far as or <laughs> not about getting your door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Right. Never, for for advice. So yeah, yeah, for yeah, advice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I would say my advice, similar to Grace, would just be like, it takes time for college uh, to really like 
you know, come into place. And so not everything's going to happen right at the beginning. So you just got to, you know, stick with it. Um, I think all of us had like a really weird freshman year with COVID and that affected me in like various ways. Um, But so I had like moments of doubt throughout that process. But at the end, like everything ended up working out. So you can see that everything will happen for a reason and you just got to give it some time. Yeah, I can agree to that. Um, I think the advice I would give to myself before college is standing out is perfectly okay. And in fact, it's preferable. Um, I remember my first year, I was like trying so hard to fit in and not necessarily with like personality wise, but I was buying like Patagonia, like sweaters, like spending all my money on it. And I remember I like begged my mom for like a Canada goose jacket, uh, which is like a pretty expensive, like, um, a nice jacket though yeah it is a nice jacket but i remember it's like over a thousand dollars for one They're of the expensive. ones that i wanted they are yeah, yeah yeah them coats it was a coat yeah 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 so i remember right. doing that all for the purpose of like being at a new school and that's what all my friends wore and other people from the marquette community um but i feel like one day it just clicked that that's not who i want to be um as someone who like tries to fit in um so i think from that point on i don't really remember like the day or the moment but um, whenever that happened, I think maybe like sophomore year, um, I've just been able to like be comfortable in myself and wear what I want and dress how I want and talk how I want and not be so caught up in like trying to be who I think I'm supposed to be. So I would give that advice to her um, and any person who's attempting to go to college or just starting a new chapter of their lives. Like you are who you are for a reason. Um, that's perfectly OK. In fact, it's beautiful. And just embracing that is going to be um what gets you through so yeah so that was some you know some pat like you know advice in the past just a quick you know last little wrap-up question uh you can give a quick answer it don't matter but where do you guys you know see yourselves or what ambitions do you have for the next five ten and then even 20 years like where do you see yourself or where do you you know want to be um I've always I've always wanted to be a writer since I was little. Um, that was like all I cared about. I just remember being younger, being in classes and like not paying attention. I was just writing stories, like my little spiral notebook. So I definitely know that I want to be a writer. I mean, I'm going to get my master's um, in journalism and I would love to be a political reporter. I've always wanted to work at the New York Times. That's like my dream, dream job. Um, and then I would love to like be an author just kind of along those same lines. I would say those are like my kind of ambitions like career wise um but yeah I would say just like in 5 10 20 years I just want to be content with wherever I'm at um I just think that's the most important thing is to kind of be at peace and be grateful for where you are how you feel about writing reps I don't think that's Grace's path. I can't Grace. say right sure. one now. I can't say I have any experience in it, but hey, I feel like I could write about anything. For you sure. Know? Writing raps. Sure. She's doing it PR. Might, right it might now. be a stretch. Oh. oh. <laughs> For Can sure. you write raps, Cam? Do you write raps? I don't need to write. He, Cam You're just sings raps. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> Finish with the D, I'm feeling like Kyrie. Oh? Oh, okay. Finish with the D, I'm feeling like Kyrie. Yep. I was finna diss the Bucks. I was finna diss oh. the Bucks. Oh. I was finna diss the Bucks. I had to stop. I had to stop. I was finna say Kyrie. You've been rehearsing that. Oh, like Tyrese. Even, yeah. All year. Oh, that's oh, no. Nice. Shout out Milwaukee For Bucks. this moment. Man, no, I ain't gonna. No. No, yeah, yeah. We'll be nice. Yeah. Great. What yeah. about you, Kristen? Oh, well, I've always wanted to get TV, I feel like. <laughs> when I was little, I I actually when I was like ten, I used to like write my own like TV scripts and like just so sit cute. at like my couch and like pretend like I was on like I would literally go upstairs dress like you would be on a TV and like I would like go around the house and like pretend it and be my parents. Did you have a blazer when you were ten? I used my mom's blazer. Oh, sure. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I used my mom's blazer, and I would on Thanksgiving. I did like a whole Thanksgiving special, and I would like go yeah. around and interview like all my fa- like family and like pretend like I literally had like an entire script written. Like yeah. I was like on the TV. But I also love doing like play by play broadcasting. I think that's been a lot of fun. So hopefully, doing something in like sports broadcasting, I like hopefully like put my love of sports somewhere. And then I guess in terms of just like waking up and like loving what you do and like be. Like what Grace said, being content in your life, like waking up happy, glad where you are, happy where you are, have a not still like be good 
friends with all of you guys. I think like when I, I remember when I left high school and like you wrote a letter to yourself five years from now. So I'm gonna open that next year, mm-hmm. and it's gonna mm-hmm. be like interesting to see like what I said when I like leaving high school. But like, I think the friends that I made here, hopefully, like we're all still in touch, going to each other's weddings and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say for me, I mean, I loved like growing up. My favorite thing to do was like going to the movies. I always loved that was like my favorite day was when my parents would take me to the movies with my friends or my siblings and um, getting to, you know, do that was what really like brought my love of movies and television. And so ever since I was a kid, I've just wanted to be a part of that in any capacity. So right now I'm hoping to work in the entertainment industry, uh, working with celebrities, maybe in PR maybe behind the scenes with stuff so um but that's kind of my ambition is just to you know work in the celebrity world with the entertainment industry and hopefully be fulfilled in what i do yeah um i pretty much and this is probably why we're roommates and best (laughs) friends i pretty much have the same aspirations as grace um when i was younger i was always interested in writing and was just someone who like that was just my thing and something that i felt was very powerful um in a vehicle to tell these cool stories so i don't think it's any wonder that i'm in journalism today um i am going to grad school it was as was mentioned a few episodes ago so i'm excited to see what northwestern does for me i think short term i want to stay in chicago but i also do want to land at some point at a major organization like the new york times or um, chicago tribune or some of these other like la times or something like around the country I think that'd be a really cool experience um and then I kind of want to backtrack and do some local journalism to end off my career um I also like in high school I started writing this like poetry book um so I think one day I want to like author a poetry book I feel like that'd be so fun I don't have a name or title or design or anything like that but I think one day it'll just like happen um so yeah I think what I always say is although like journalism is kind of what I do I think being a writer is always what I've loved so I just if I'm writing in the next like 5 10 15 years in whatever capacity um and it's honest and it's me I think I'll be happy with whatever I do so yeah what about you guys oh oh Oh. Oh, (laughs) I didn't expect that (laughs) next 5 10 20 years honestly I don't even know uh it's hard to even like imagine being a senior in college next year because, you know, time just flies. It feels like I just got here. It feels like, you know, we both just committed and Coach Smart just got the job. So just thinking forward, I think the most important thing for me right now is kind of enjoy, you know, our senior year with each other and enjoy all the experiences because as we've already experienced, it goes by fast. So that's the biggest thing I'm, you know, over the next year really just looking forward to is, and we have a great opportunity ahead of us uh, with losing, you know, some key players and stuff like that to kind of just, you know, be able to be something that people may not think we can can be. And I think, you know, this summer uh, preseason is going to be a great time to, you know, get ready for that, uh, be in the gym all the time with each other, and then also just enjoying the moments off the court, whether we go out to dinner, go to a Brewers game, go to a – well, not a Bucks game anymore, but <laughs> something like that, just, sure. you know – enjoy the experiences and you know just be in the moment as much as possible um yeah definitely looking forward to this next season like Stu said uh in five ten to twenty years um kind of like what Grace said I would you know hope to see myself you know uh in a like kind of pretty much what she said in, in a content spot in life um enjoying where I'm at um hopefully you know have a long career with basketball. Um, look, I want to get into boxing by the time I stop playing. So hopefully I'm still feeling, you know, healthy and up for it. Um, so, yeah, I guess, right, that's probably where I would want to see myself in 10 to 20 years. Okay, cool. We'll be waiting on that boxing match. I got to <laughs> strengthen up. Saturday night. For sure. <laughs> for sure. Definitely. Saturday it's coming. It's, cause it's coming game. about – Give me sixteen and a half years. Oh, oh, oh that's oh, very. Oh, oh, that's, right. say, well, like, that's, that's when I was. That, well, <laughs> you're gonna have a fifteen and a half bas- playing basketball then. Fifteen and a half year career. You know, that's what I like to think. That's what I like to tell myself. I feel like by that time I'm gonna have to hang them up. I'm gonna have to hang them up. I'm probably gonna be 
I'm probably gonna be weak. <laughs> but not weak enough to box. Not weak. No, 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 not that weak. I'm talking about like I'm probably gonna I'm not gonna be good no more. I'm gonna be washed. Mm. Oh. Be a lost cause. They're not gonna care about me no more. Oh, oh. hey. Oh. That's not that. true. You'll always have a you got a friend in me. Oh, oh. where did oh, that come from? Oh. <laughs> I thought it was I okay. It felt like it felt like the right anyway. Thank you, Grace, for that. <laughs> Yeah, we were, yeah we were not on the same page just there. I, <laughs> I didn't know what she was about to say. Oh uh, yeah yeah yeah, I don't know that song. Either. <laughs> oh, you don't know that song? <laughs> Toy Story? Toy Have you ever Story? seen Toy Story? You got a friend. Uh, yeah you know yeah that song. yeah. Uh, yeah, I Woody seen Woody and Toy Buzz. Story. Woody and Buzz, you got a friend. In me. Yeah, I knew the song. I just was not expecting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone was expecting her to start. Yeah, I'm Hope sorry. and I were just like on the same wave. I knew yeah. it was coming. I don't remember that Thank song, but yeah. I, I, I watched Toy Story though. I, my favorite my favorite one, Toy Story three. I don't believe that's that. the best one with what? the bear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the bear, with the the bear was kind of scary. Bear was scary. Yeah, yeah, nah, scary. I, I, I was trying, I was trying to kill Lasso. Couldn't stand Lasso. When they were like, like <laughs> heat, whatever that thing is, and like the bear like leaves them all to like. And the daycare. Do they you remember daycare. when they like open the door and he like walks in and he's like. Man, who yeah, I messed with game. though? I was just, no. who I messed with. My dog was the uh, the phone. Oh, the phone. Oh. The phone. That was my dog right there. He told him how to get up out of there. He said, but. You ain't going nowhere if you don't get rid of that monkey. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's, that's my dog. You might also right have a future career in voice acting. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Um, hey, you do have a great. I'm, I'm getting, I'm trying to get into acting a little bit. Oh, a just tiny. Will you know we see him in Hamilton? Uh, oh. No, I'm trying <laughs> to learn from Stu. Stu, uh, you know, he took an acting class. Oh, cool. Oh, uh, you like know he got some he got some stuff in, under his belt. I'm trying to you know pick his brain. At. <laughs> I'm trying to be. <laughs> <laughs> Try to pick his brain, Eddie. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, I feel like this episode should be titled "Bald Eagles and Toy Story." <laughs> Bald, <laughs> Bald Eagles. Keep Eagle. the listeners. Wondering. Yeah, okay, that's good. The Bald Eagles ain't uh, they yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm glad. I was about to say. I <laughs> I was, about, I was just about to say, I mean, I guess I don't care. I was just curious. Like, yeah, maybe you should get how is that possible? Eagle. Yeah. You said what? Get a pet bald eagle. I mean, Why I would I? Know. That's illegal. Yeah. <laughs> what? yeah, that wasn't a great suggestion. That's the whole point. That was what I'm trying to figure out. That's, Ain't no way they go. They were though. almost extinct. <laughs> oh, because people yes. like Kristen encourage people like you to don't get a <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> What that mean? No, 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 that's not a bad thing. <laughs> people like you is crazy. Oh, that's not what I meant. This has gone off. For sure. No, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they ain't gonna. They have people like me. They ain't, they ain't gonna get. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't having a damn pet uh, bald eagle. I don't even want no pet dog. No, I do want a pet dog. I ain't gonna lie. I want a pet dog. I don't want no bald. <laughs> I don't want no bald eagle though. What kind of dog do you want? Uh, English bulldog. I need two English bulldogs. But as a matter of fact, add that to the tip five, ten years. In five, ten years. <laughs> All everything I said with two English bulldogs. Okay. That's why I see and you feel that what I was. Oh my god! I ain't figured out. I want to name one of them. I, I want to name one of them Moses. Oh, oh. I, I like Moses. I like Moses. Uh, I think that's so fitting for the bulldog. Like they, they lazy. Like they oh, big. Oh, I want a French bulldog. Cool. Moses actually did a lot. <laughs> like they cool though. Like you feel what I'm saying? They like a real brother. Like they don't do nothing. They just want to eat. They. What is that? I feel like that's most dogs. The hardest part is training though. They just so big. <laughs> But they so cute. I love how you're huh? like you're like struggling with it. No, uh, that's, that's no, like French no. bulldogs. Oh, I want a French I bulldog. You want a Frenchie? Frenchie's yeah. cute too. French or pug? But they annoying. You gotta get the big daddy. Him and big daddy don't do nothing. They chilling. <laughs> I love how daddy. Cam's like stressing over his hypothetical dog that he said he wanted. He's like, I want an English bulldog, but ah. Uh. <laughs> no, no, no. I love no. Yeah, I could talk about bulldogs. Well, English bulldogs all day. They. Next they, podcast they, episode, guys. We can do something bulldog. like that. We can figure something out. We can talk about bulldogs. Okay. Okay. All right, and <laughs> after that little <laughs> off-topic, yeah. Well, that's all, we, <laughs> that's all we have today, and I hope finals week has been going great for everybody. We uh, pre appreciate all of you guys again, and uh, thanks to everybody who tuned in. I hope you guys you know enjoyed listening, and just stay tuned. More to come in the future. Yeah, for sure. We want to thank y'all for everything y'all have done for us. You know this this year, and you know we will definitely miss you guys and. Wish you all the best of luck with your future and everything that y'all got. Um, yeah, we really, once we really do want to say thank you and want to get y'all some airtime. So um, thank you. Guys. It's been a blast. It's been for sure. We got for the podcast and for the fans. We got some more stuff coming this summer. Um, you know, we only gonna get better from here. Uh, so I would just say, if you want my advice, 
Keep listening. Tell your mama to tell her mama's mama. Well, your mama friend. Tell your friend to tell your friends, friend, friend, friend about the show. Just pass it along. And uh, yeah. you feel what I'm saying? Just keep spreading that love. Uh, yeah, stay tuned. Cause we got some. We got some big stuff on the way. Yes, sir. Be sure to follow us on you know all platforms at the K1 and Stewie Show, so you don't miss out. Uh, we also just got a TikTok account, so tune in. Uh, I know you you know TikTok up and coming. Actually, might be going soon, oh, but. For yeah, sure. You got at least six months. So yeah. You'll so. be okay. We'll kick it up. We'll kick it over to Hope for last words. Yeah. And I do just want to say um, thank you guys so much for this experience. Um, I know that I banged on your door loud, Stevie. Oh, it's all good. <laughs> but it's all good. I feel like we were really able to not only make a connection on air, but off air as well. So I appreciate you guys for this opportunity and for all of the seniors and, again, the people that work behind the scenes, Trevor, Jack, um, Maddie, Ooh. and Patrick Johnson. Mm -hmm. Um, who made all of this come together and all of the guests that we've had. This has been such a fun ride. And thank you to the listeners as well. We would not be here without you guys and everyone who has sent, um, you know, friendship bracelets or um, has sent emails in support or left comments in support. Um, that has been a lot to me, and I know it's been a lot to the team as well. So I just wanted to give some final words. Um, although I'm off to my next journey, I wish – everyone well um who continues to stay on the podcast and i wish you both well and we'll stay in touch of course um so yeah that's a wrap peace out